Welcome once again to another Thought for the Day, sponsored by the New River Circuit of the Methodist Church in London. Once again, this is my prayer and my hope that as we continue to discuss and seek to understand the Word of God, that through the wisdom of His Holy Spirit, it would inspire us as we understand the truth contained in his word. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this blessed opportunity where we can share your word together. Open our ears, our hearts, our minds, and our eyes so that we may not only see or hear, but we may understand. And Father God, most of all, we pray that your word will not return to you void, as by the power of your Holy Spirit you enabled us to live according to your word. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I read for us from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17, and I just want to share with us some thoughts from two verses, verse 26 and 27 of Acts chapter 17 and it reads as follows from one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him though indeed he is not far from each one of us. And verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. Over the past days, we have been living in very eventful times. And I just want to say from this passage of scripture, it is clear to me that diversity was at the heart of God's plan in creation. That God wanted the universe to be diverse. Look at the trees, various species. Look at the animals, various kinds. And so with us human beings, we may have different colors, different thoughts, different tradition, different cultures. But yet we are created by the same God who created us in his image. And I personally believe that diversity is God's gift to his creation. Imagine if all things were the same and all of us were the same. Life would become very monotonous. Diversity makes life interesting. But it's indeed a fact from the Word of God as this passage of Scripture shows that we are all God's people. And as God's people, we are all world citizens. Therefore, we should all have the same rights And we are all entitled to the same freedom. But the events over the years have shown us that this is not the case. My brothers and sisters, we may have different ethnicity. We may have different shades of skin. But we are all one people because God created one race 
and that is the human race of which all humans are a part. So therefore, why should some be treated differently to others? And one may ask the question, why is there racism? Racism has been with us for centuries and I believe it will continue to be with us for a very long time. Simply because God's created human beings do not grasp the truth that we are all one people, regardless of color, creed, or class. We think about the recent events in, in America, and that famous cry will not leave our hearts and minds. I cannot breathe. And then we think about institutional racism. We think about discrimination. We think about all the evils that derive as a result of racism. And I said to us, my brothers and sisters, it is appalling that this should happen in the 21st century. We remember that cry as it agonizes in our hearts and our minds, I cannot breathe. And as I think about that cry, I think that is the cry of many black and minority ethnic people throughout the world on a daily basis because of institutional racism. And it pains my heart when I hear people say that there's hardly any racism in this country or those things only happen in America. And I wonder if those people are not aware of what people, the color like myself, experience on a daily basis. Yes, racism might have changed its, its form. It has become more subtle in this country. But it's very much with us. People will, may not meet you and call you names because you're black. But it goes beyond that. The way that one is being treated. When you are treated as a, as they call you, a minority ethnic, which in itself, that name has a connotation because the way people see you is the way they're going to treat you. And if they see you as minority, you will be treated as minority. And when because you're of the minority that you can only reach so far in any institution, you can't get no further, or we're going to keep you at the level we want you to be. All this suppression, all this discrimination, mainly because of the color of your skin. I want to say to us, my brothers and sisters, that as a people, I'm happy to see that all colors have come out and are demonstrating against this evil. I'm happy to see that the young generation are so conscious that they will stand up for what they perceive to be institutional racism. You know, it pains my heart when I listen to political leaders making statements and organizations making pronouncements as to say racism is a sin and to hear our leaders say that they understand the pain and the depth of the, of the anger and it cannot be ignored. 
when politicians say they themselves have suffered racism, but yet nothing is being done. It's like saying most people, the, the majority of people who have died from COVID comes from the black and minority ethnic. But you never hear what is going to be done to prevent the continuance of such a situation. You never hear what is the reason for that. You see, my brothers and sisters, it is time that we are treated as equals. And that's one of the things I like about the Methodist Church because our founder, John Wesley, since I've learned of his zeal and his part for and his participation in the abolition of slavery, I've seen copies of letters that he wrote to William Wilberforce to assist with the abolition of slavery and to protest that people like me People of my color have been treated with such disdain. And I want to leave us with some words that were penned or spoken by the late Haile Selassie and made famous by Bob Marley in one of his songs and his album, Rat Race. And Selassie says, Until the philosophy which hold one race superior and another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned. Until there's no longer first class citizens and second class citizens of any nation. Until the color of a person's skin is, is of no more significance than the color of their eyes. Until each basic human right are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race. Until that day, the dream of lasting peace and world citizenship and the rule of international morality will remain but fleeting illusions to be pursued, but never attained. You see, we cannot move forward by glorifying the imperial and cruel pass. The time has passed for pronouncements. It's time for peaceful, civil, democratic, and decisive actions. People are suffering. There may not be a physical knee on our necks, but there is a, the knee that is continually on our necks. And the people's cry still remain, I can't breathe. What legacy do we want to leave for future generations? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the freedom of speech. We thank you for the mind you have given us to eradicate or seek to eradicate the evils among us. Father God, we pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray that as a people, we will continue to realize that diversity is part of your plan and your purpose, and that we should celebrate that diversity, but remembering that despite the diversity, we are one. In Jesus' name, amen.